welcome humans and non-humans of all types to Pookie Science. What is what is the breakdown of our non-human listeners? <laughs> I mean, maybe we have listeners that are dogs. Lucas, what does uh, Podbean or Anchor or whatever you use tell us about our demographic breakdown among animals? Surprisingly <laughs> popular amongst African gray parents. We are losing our demographic in dogs because of the other podcast. I guess we're not really a dog podcast based because I, I would assume from my anti-cat rhetoric that we would have gotten more of them. No, dogs like cats, man. I hear we're doing exceptionally well with the kangaroos. Oh my gosh, the Aussies. Yeah, they love us. Jumping for joy. <laughs> oh, Professor Madison, good to have I, you back. I, 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 I miss you, Lucas. Yeah. So I miss you a lot. <laughs> because you're back, we want to, let's do part, we need part two of the Eevee. We were asked to do part two like months ago, and we finally can. Well, and I'm sorry, I know I've been away, but I'm, I'm available now. Life, we life. were saving this episode for the Eevee community day. Yeah. That's the lie we're going with. Yes, not randomly. <laughs> it's also it's also because your 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 host one of your hosts said that she'd have a big fit. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Don't you dare that's... talk about my favorite Pokemon ever. Yeah, that Facebook message got long. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. I know. Uh, to to think though, to think though, the amount of EV memorabilia in this house. <laughs> Oh. All right. Well, we've got some. We've got quite a few Pokemon to talk about because there are a lot of EVs that we did not cover. So, Lucas, why don't you do the thing? All right. Wait. Wait. Can I do it? Go right ahead. Cue the music. All right. So, science news. This one really makes me laugh i didn't tell either of you what it was because it made me laugh hysterically what was it so they recently did a study and they found that polar bears are exceptionally good at tool usage as in they have been known to on occasion throw rocks at walruses to bludgeon them to death nice that is now Wait. originally this what? was yeah they are known for tool usage and they will use rocks and ice to attack but that, know, that's not even animal. like, like, I mean, that's beyond tool use. That's like full on Hawkeye. Yeah, understanding a three dimensional <laughs> space understanding. We don't know how good their aim is, to be clear. <laughs> that's why we said occasionally. <laughs> Lots of animals can chuck rocks. <laughs> but with wait, the attention for murder. Wait, 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 wait. So are we insinuating that there are other animals <laughs> that are throwing rocks at horses? I mean, if you move your paw fast enough at a rock, it'll move. And that's kind of throwing. So not the same. originally, not the same. though, we used to think this was nonsense because the people, we, the first way we learned about this was because the Inuit people were telling it. But due to a mix of things such as prejudice, we didn't think it was nonsense. White researchers thought it was nonsense. To be fair, if someone in the 1800s came up to you and said, hey, did you know that bears throw rocks? Like, there's always going to be some skepticism. Combine that with the fact that the researchers didn't trust the Inuit hunters, which is really dumb, considering the Inuit hunters are not known for exaggerating. They don't have the time. And they like, live there. <laughs> yeah. Like, you should at least take it with a grain of salt. The same thing happened with alligators in the South when the locals say, yeah, maybe alligators climb tree. And the scientists were like, that's hogwash. We know better than you. It's one of those times where science needs to... That one, that, that one researcher got stuck in the tree. And then he just sees a baby gator. Oh, look at that. But yeah, that's your science news. Polar bears will kill things with rocks. You are welcome. <laughs> Chris, do you have, like you mentioned something about EV days. What's going on now? So we have a community weekend. Yay. Not day. It's two days. Ooh. Uh, um, but it's it's basically just another community day. I think I talked about it last time with uh, Don. Uh, so I won't go like crazy details about it but it's this weekend it'll be a lot of fun all the different evolutions get their own move instead of all of them getting last resort i think the only one that matters is that umbreon's getting psychic all the other ones are kind of like uh, umbreon getting psychic is like stupid cool yeah, yeah it's, it's also cool. if we're getting into like the breakdown of battling it's the same energy cost as last resort but obviously gets stab against things that hurt umbreon so fighting so, types. yes they're reducing the amount of hearts you have to get to evolve Sylveon. Because normally it's like, I think it's 
60 hearts and i think they're doing it to like seven or something so if you don't have if i can log in for a day can i involve my sylveon oh yeah absolutely i guess the uh, the other bit of pokemon go news is there's been a little bit of drama with the game and a lot of uh calls for a boycott from some of the content creators and the community i saw that what why uh, so a lot of it was tied to them redu- or taking away some of the changes that they had implemented uh, during the pandemic. And the biggest one that I can see is the um, uh, the distance to trigger Pokestops. So basically when like lockdown started in 2020 and people weren't going anywhere, they increased the range from which you could yeah, I hit, remember. A hit a gym. And they basically brought it back to pre-pandemic times. Uh, and a lot of people are unhappy well, like, about this. For, well, for yeah, we're like, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, that's that's one. And and then the, the, the other parts that aren't like pandemic related are just kind of like security related. Because as someone pointed out before, you could just be walking on one side of the street and hit a stop. But now if you want to hit it, you have to cross four lanes of traffic. And... Like there's a lot of safety things in there, and so so hopefully they've been responsive before the community calling for changes or or reversions from things that they've changed. So hopefully they bring some of this stuff back. Oh, there was the Pokemon Snap news that came out too. Oh wait, I have one more Pokemon Go thing. One more whoa, Pokemon whoa, 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 Go. What? They're putting Zacian and Zamazenta in the game. Ew. Um, uh, and then they're also putting in some Galar sh- like shiny Berserker, shiny Galar Stunfisk. They're putting a bunch of Galar shinies in it, which. I think at this point we have more Galar Pokemon in the game than we do Alola. Oh, that's a, that hurts. That hurts a little. We're going to have the Galar legendaries before like the starters for Alola. Oh, that hurts. Which really I mean, I sucks. I love Phalanx, but... Poplio is amazing. Yeah, I just did a whole thing on that. Poplio is amazing. I know. They're so cute. Um, but yeah, Lucas, you brought up, we, have, we got the Snap update. I haven't... Has it come out yet? I haven't downloaded it. I think it already came out, but I love that it's free DLC. Like, mm. the fact that Pokemon... Wait, so out, like, is a... it is it like an actual DLC or just a patch? It's, it's... No, it's... I think there's, like, three new zones. Yeah, three that's new cool. zones. There's the River Zone, the Micro Zone. Was the... Micro... Wait, hold on. Micro Zone, like, is in, like, Ant-Man? They shrink you down to the size of an ant and have you go through the original area. So now you're looking at giant Jigglypuffs and giant Wait, Pikachu. Are, are you making fun of me or serious? I'm dead serious. I'm what? not a liar. <laughs> Lucas ain't no liar. Wait, what? Yeah, who, I'm dead who, serious. Who came up with this idea? <laughs> I don't know. A genius? A madman? Who cares? It's so cool. No, so it looks like they've got, they added the Badlands, the, the Mighty Wide River. The Mighty Wide I don't like that name at all. <laughs> no. Uh, and then the micro stuff. Isn't that height? <laughs> That's just no. No, we're not even going to get into it. We are we we have families who listen you to know, this. You know, I am um, I, I actually don't own the game um cuz my boyfriend has it. Mm. And I after leaving your house, Chris, um we went down to Florida to go to the convention with Don. I played that game for the first time and that's a fun game though. Mm-hmm. It's a really and nice I sir. I played it the whole way home from Nashville. Um, and yeah, you guys are right. Like, like what an easy game to like just relax on. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's like the game you get a cup of tea. But tw- while you're looking at your photos, you get a cup of tea. Like, I like this one. What do you mean I only got this many points on that one? It's, it's we nice. also learned that Onyx can fly. Yes, that was fantastic. I, I couldn't get that to happen. How do you do that? I don't. We just like turned around and it was higher than the the Mandibus. It's yeah, oh, that's literally crazy. Just, you could hear the dolphin noises in your head just, as it jumped in and out no. of the sand. It was wild. As he's jumping out, as he's jumping out of the sand, he's saying "So long and thanks for all the fish." So long and thanks for all the fish. Da, da. Oh, that's such a good reference. Ah, oh, love it. Love that movie, Hitchhiker's Guide. We listen to that audiobook on the way. <laughs> it's such a good audiobook. Of course you would. All right. I think that's all our news. I yeah. I think we're good. So let's jump right into the... Let's go back. Let's go to some science. So last time, we talked a little bit about DNA. We talked a little bit about what constituted, why it's important. This time on Wait, our part two... Wait, it's not called DNA. I saw this in this movie called... Um... Zootopia, it's called Dena. Uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. 
very important to life. But I wanted to talk today oh. about how our knowledge <laughs> Bingo, of DNA. Dino DNA. Uh, I can't be scientific for one moment with you people. Sorry. Continue <laughs> with the science, good sir. With DNA, it's incredibly important now as we go into the future to understand exactly what we can do with it because this is what we know about DNA is going to have drastic effects on everything from our food to our cultures to life itself for all, all of us because we are now at the level where not only can we sequence certain genomes, we can look at the entire we can sequence the entire human genome and know where certain things are. We are now looking at the technology to change it in the same way that stones and friendship and macaroons can change EVs. We have technology that can change the genetic structure of things in our everyday life. The most famous right now is uh, CRISPR. Uh, you guys have heard of CRISPR? Yeah. Never. CRISPR Cas9. So <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. heard of CRISPR. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the day that that Batman Beyond episode becomes real. Oh, the Chimera episode where you can just stick yourself in and get animal yeah, parts. Yeah, yeah. Jab myself with a needle, and all of a sudden I get snake eyes. Uh, that would be that would be on the lines of what we're talking about today. So if you don't know how CRISPR works, I'll, I'll simplify it as much as possible. So what CRISPR does is it's not only able to target specific parts of your DNA, it's also able to turn on and off certain genetic traits in you or add new ones. So for example, if you wanted to have blue eyes, your blue eyes are just your cells sequencing a certain kind of protein in order to get to that. Like that, like that AATT. GG, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So all you'd have to do is program the CRISPR to go in and replace it. And eventually the cells will replicate and duplicate and you will get yourself some blue eyes. That is the concept. And so far, the reason it's famous is because it's cheap. It's long, because it's cheap, anyone can do it. There are now people who are like calling themselves like backyard geneticists or, or biohackers who are going which in is like trying... super super dangerous <laughs> it is incredible there was one dude who literally tried to like give himself like bigger muscles and like actively ingested crispr to see if it would happen like in front of an audience like he has no idea the consequences but he's like haha yolo let's see what happens like he it's, has like... no muscles now his muscles all became stone <laughs> it's actually more depressing than that and that there was barely any change at all. At least if there were, if he held his muscles were gone, he was on <laughs> some kind of right track. It's like, oh, nothing happened. It's even more annoying. Well, you know, the, the worst part was that his mom was there and she was really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> With our knowledge of DNA, we are now able to solve crimes that are over 50 years old. We have now, you can see news stories every month of like certain people getting pulled aside, like, hang on. We found your DNA. We were actually finally able to sequence it. You were that murderer from 70 years ago. You're going to jail. That's really cool. It does lead to a, a, a weird, dangerous slope, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> Let's say you are a super rich parent, not even a billionaire, just a millionaire, and you want to make sure that your kid has the best advantage in life. Wait, are you describing the entire plot to Gundam Seed? <laughs> a little bit, but... <laughs> It, it it can happen where you can say, I want my kid to have the best advantage possible. And you go to one of these biohackers and be like, can you make them a bit taller? Tall people are more successful. And you can probably get that. Can you make him a coordinator? I want a coordinator. <laughs> if you can make someone... Now, obviously, you can't just make someone a famous pianist. You can't just make somebody like something like that based on their genetics. There has to be other things involved, like the nurture, the training... We lose so many geniuses from a lack of good educational system in the system because we don't give them the right supplies. But the fact that you can alter someone's DNA can be really, really dangerous. You could literally live in a society where all the rich people are genetically like superior, which is Again, some real gun, dark gun, road. Gun, Gundam seed. <laughs> but on the other hand, if we use this technology correctly, we can wipe out a lot of diseases. We can wipe out genetic diseases that cause people to suffer every day. Yes. Uh, 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 you were so worried about whether you could, you forgot to ask whether you should. Mm -hmm. Well said, Goldblum. Well said. Our second, our second Jurassic Park reference. <laughs> but keep in mind, we are already You're using welcome. this technology to save lives with the COVID-19 vaccine, which was made using something similar. It's fantastic. We have all of this knowledge with DNA. 
we can in the future hopefully you'll get your cat eyes and i'll have my kid immune to like hiv which is fantastic i want to work the, out the, 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 i would say the the disease that comes up a lot when talking about crispr is sickle cell anemia too like that's that that that's usually thrown around a lot because of the implications with with dealing with that yeah it's just an amazing time again everyone always complains about like oh we were i was born in the wrong generation no you weren't this place is awesome we get we have certainly bad things in our timeline but also we have we're at the crest we are at the front of some of the most amazing stuff we'll be able to change the world and our food in ways we can't even imagine i don't know i don't know i i feel like these gen y kids or gen z kids got a pretty great thing going i mean i hope i mean i'm glad they do my mom always said i hate it my mom is like 65 years old and she's like you know i always hate it when people my age say that we lit that these kids have it too easy that's the point that's the point hanging out with middle schoolers just here like during this summer made it so apparent totally different oh i'm sorry we built the new generation with empathy our bad yeah, it's, it's amazing i love it i'm hoping that all of this CRISPR stuff and all this dna stuff like helps in that regard making us all a little bit asking for that equality of like hey let's make sure that none of us ever have to go through any of these diseases or that all of us have this advantage to make sure that our food can grow a little bit better and be a little bit more resistant. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have some fun. A lot of, a lot of ethical questions, but luckily there are people more equipped to deal with those than us. Oh my, yes. I hope so. If we're the, if we are the top, like Lucas, what Lucas, Madison, Chris, what do you think? Like they just come to us like, um, well, one of us wants snake eyes. If you can make that happen, that'd be dope. <laughs> I don't want snake eyes. I'm pretty sure we all know what I want. <laughs> all right. So with that science out of the way, we got to get to the rest of the EVs. We got a bunch of them. Yeah. Well, to be fair, though, two of them are really short. Yes. Two of them are short mythologically, scientifically, not so much. No, they're also pretty short scientifically. There's not a lot. Fine. No one, no one cares about them anyway, so it's okay. Hey, you know what? You know what, though? Like nice. Lila's, Lila's favorite is Glaceon. <laughs> Every that's 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 true. Every every Pokemon is someone's favorite Pokemon. Mm -hmm. That's the rule. Be nice, except Weedle. No, I think he's right. I think he's right. Like that was the, the result of that like survey a few years ago that no one likes Weedle. They they took like, like several several thousand people, and like the survey had not one person like Weedle. <laughs> Hold on, I'm I, let me. I'm finding the survey real quick. Do you remember uh, that? Do you remember that? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I was. And yeah. So it wasn't Weedle; it was Silcoon. That's who it was. Yeah. Oh, Sil. That's sad. No, that's but like sadder. Weedle, Weedle was up there though as one of the like most unliked. Silcoon has sad eyes. There was fifty-two thousand people voted for their yeah. favorite, and yep. um, four got zero votes. Yep. Do you want to read who they are? It was Silcoon slash Cascoon, Gothita, Electric. Boo! And, and young goose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that makes so terrifying. Weedle, Weedle was up there on one of the most hated, though. Yeah, yeah. Weedle was up there, but those were the ones that got zero yeah. votes in this. <laughs> Aromatisse gets hated a lot, too. There's a lot of hated Pokemon. Nope, nope. Apparently, someone in the world likes Aromatisse. <laughs> Somebody. Some very strange people with very strange tastes. <laughs> so, wait, if you're listening right now, and you love Arimites, please write Lucas an email. Just find us on Twitter. It's like, I am that one person, and I am strange and weird. <laughs> Don't insult uh, the listeners, Lucas. Okay, fine. That's, that's my job. Yeah, that's her. I'm sorry. I took your shtick. Let's get to the... Uh, we got sidetracked. I want to talk about Espeon. <laughs> yes, big psychic cat. Big psychic cat, but unlike the others... Oh, it's my favorite, though. It's my baby. It is a very sweet baby. But this is, again, what we were talking about before we recorded. Every Eevee up to this, from this point on, is just there to show off the new evolution mechanics. Well, to be fair, though, like, the stones are, like, technically, like, you know, the quote-unquote new evolution mechanic in the first game. Yeah, yeah it's like the, the special mechanic. The special, ooh, look how you can evolve with this rock. But unlike... The other ones, Espeon and Umbreon, evolve from protecting their trainer. So instead of it being some sort of radiation, it's just a stress. It's like, oh my god, I have to save the trainer and protect it. I need to be stronger. Well, but animals do, and 
Animals do that in the real world, though, right? Like they adapt because of stress. Yeah, stress is going to be one of the best ways to key in evolution. There's thoughts that if there's no stress, there's no adaptation, which people have read horribly into thinking like, oh, we need people to suffer for them to get stronger. It's like, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, no, guys, don't do that. Yeah, but the thing is, Espeon might be a bit of a liar because it's not, it may not be entirely psychic. So, it oh, obviously is a psychic type. Don't call my baby a liar. But here's the thing. it In the Pokedex, it states that it uses the currents of air to tell what the enemy will do and predict where it's coming. So cats can do this with their whiskers. Plenty of other animals can use their hair as a sense to find out what's going on around them. So what I think is Espeon is saving some of its psychic power for attacking. Okay, so hold on. What if Espeon's not telepathic, but it still is telekinetic? That could be a thought. I mean, it learns future sight, which is weird. I think it's just saving its power for when it actually needs it. When it actually needs it. It's like, it, I'm only using 1% of my power. So with the red stone on its forehead, it's weird because that kind of references the lunar eclipse. But we, it's this one's actually really easy to tell what it's based on. It's based on a yokai called the Nekamata. Nekamata. So what, what do you know about the Nekamata, uh, Madison? You know more about lore stuff than I do. Um, I actually don't know a lot on this. This one, one I think this one's you, Lucas. I'm yeah. the one living in Japan, you, you so I'll actually, take it. You know a lot more about this one than I do. I, I was reading about it, and it's terrifying. Yes, because it's a cat. Anyway, Nekamatas uh, come in two varieties. So you either have the mountain Nekamatas and the domesticated uh, Nekamatas. So the mountain ones are cats that ran away from home. They didn't want to be around people. Just, nope, I'm tired of humanity. Run away. And when they get into the forest, they turn into these big, strong, sometimes they're combined, they're talked about to have like the face of a cat, like the body as big as a dog, and then they have the forked tail. So these also have the domesticated version. And those are cats that just die of super old age and weren't treated well. Here's Aww. the weird part. Yeah, again, this is the bad, weird part. These, po these um, yokai get stronger the more they were treated poorly. So if you were the kind of guy who mistreats and abuses your animals, one, you're going to hell. Two, these animals get really, really angry. They will trick, abduct, and eat people who had nothing to do with them, like, being tortured. It's not like they go after, like, the one guy who treated them poorly. It's like, if I see a person, I'm killing them and torturing them. I think it's really weird that a yokai famous for getting stronger through vengeance and hatred gets stronger from love in the game yeah well so like but it, it is also have and I, this one i know because again espion's my favorite and she's been my favorite since gen 2 came out like they also have ties into some of the mytho mythological like links because mm -hmm. of that yeah. that idea like it, it, and links right they they obviously they see through things we've talked about that lux ray and don and i talked about that a lot at the convention we did a whole predator presentation um but a lot of the folklore depicts Lynx as almost like clairvoyant, mm -hmm. you know, able to see things in the future, to see what's coming, you know, like, like psychic, which would match Espeon too, though, right? Because it gets things like future sight. Yeah, I think it I would. Think that, uh, yeah, it gets into what Lucas was talking about with the, like, the sensing airflows with whiskers and all that. Like, that's, that's kind of where that tie with the, the cat comes from. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but, like, they also have, like, Espeon has gigantic eyes. Yes. and I, She has, her eye to, like, body ratio is really big. It's quite anime, yes. And her ears are gigantic. Like, I don't know, like, it does, like, the ears, especially because of the point pointed tips on the end, like, it does feel almost lynx-like. It does. And I think that's super cool how in, for people, when they first saw cats and lynxes, like, out in the wild, and they would just see them, and... When you, like, try and attack those animals, they would just jump out of the way immediately. You'd think, like, whoa, how did it know what I was going to do? Did it read my mind? Well, I think I think a few things that I liked about it, right, was that um, some of the depictions of it, right, is that it, like, like singing, like, really depressing songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dress, the ones dress, that are, like, dressed dress, up. Like, dressed as a geisha. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to – I need that art, someone. Please give me my Espeon playing, you know – playing some music in geisha garb it should be really easy this one and umbreon are the most cosplayed pokemon i've ever seen <gasps> i have my next cosplay thank you you're welcome now speaking of the next one we got to talk about umbreon because i really hate its first deck entry 
like a lot. Wait, what's the first entry say? It has poisonous sweat, and it uses that to attack whenever it gets angry. I'll throw my sweat at you. Yeah, it literally just has acidic sweat, and it doesn't learn poison sweat. Look, I've seen... It learns toxic, though. Not, it's not acidic sweat, Lucas. It's poisonous sweat. Poisonous sweat, so you gotta eat it. I mean, yeah, right? I, I've seen cats spray people. That's funny. It's when it's a, when it's a tiger and it's a bunch of campers who don't know any better. Wait, it's you've seen you've seen that like up close? No, I wish. I just have the stories, but it's something mm. that happens. That's whenever you see a tiger habitat and a chain link fence, you stay far away. Like if there's any, if there's like open air between you and a tiger, don't go near it. Just they're gonna pee on you. It's gross. Hippos are similar in that regard. Don't don't go near the backside. So of if you animals. guys if you guys have pee <laughs> stories of hippos and tigers. Send them to Lucas. <laughs> I do love those. Animals are terrifying. But it is based in part, it is a dark type. And I think that's in part in the idea that black cats are considered to be bad luck in many societies, mostly in the West. But it's really weird since that uh, cats are considered good luck, especially for single women here in Japan. I would say that it's it's not, and it's not so much just like a general West, because there are parts of like for sailors in the West, cats, uh, black cats are considered good luck. Uh, like, they were popular on ships. They're popular with sailors' wives. Honestly, the, 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 the bad luck that I see a lot comes when it's tied into with religion and the, idea, the like, fear of potential witchcraft. I know that with, with the witchcraft idea, there was, think, there was uh, people thought that they were essentially, like, the witch's familiars and that they could transform and that service to the devil and all that kind of stuff. And unfortunately, much like you know, everything tied with the witch. Like, there's a lot of mistreatment of black cats because of yeah. roots in this. Well, they get, uh, they get, they get like, hurt. They are the least adopted of cats. They're the most likely to be abused. Yeah. I know that, too, because we had a black cat during college for that reason. If you, like, to get kind of dark for a second, um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that animal shelters around Halloween will not let people adopt. They don't. Pets. They don't. Yeah. For safety concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, I know that relief. for a fact. And te- that's, that's both horrible and a relief. Yeah. I'm glad that they do it, but because they do it, it means that there was a reason for them to do it, which is messed up. Yeah. People, come on. Like, just treat, just, just treat animals right, guys. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cats special are... place in heaven for animal lovers. Okay, cats wait. Are, cats are great. So with Umbreon, it's not just a black cat. It's a Egyptian themed one, which again, yeah. if you're looking at a checklist of mythologies, it's usually going to be China or or Egypt. And this one is based on what from what I can see, Bast. So originally Bast was actually part lion, but then they eventually transitioned it to being part cat. I I heard a lot of the original folklore for that was that it was just a cat. <laughs> yeah, there's it depends. Folklore and mythology change she was a major symbol of some of the religions there but she was known in part to be the goddess of the moon which makes sense with umbreon because you know umbreon evolves at night well but Uh, originally originally boss was like a warrior of the sun yeah it's weird again they change the egyptian gods change exactly who and what they're protecting apparently she was also known as the goddess of childbirth because the egyptian gods were like like catty high schoolers it just changed up (laughs) it also changed on who was in charge Changing clicks every year. Yeah, there were different pharaohs who believed in so many different things that, like, some gods were buried, others were risen up, some were. Like, <laughs> I'm done hanging out with the cheerleaders. I'm totally switching to the theater kids. Yeah, it's it's strange, but since Umbreon's rings glow in the moonlight, it's probably your best bet that this is mostly based in Egypt. There are Aztec ancient jaguars that also glow in the moonlight. It's not an ancient jaguar. He's a deity. Deity. In the shape of a jaguar. Okay, I can do this one. I can do this one because I learned all the Aztec names for one for one of the presentations Chris and I put together. Go for um, it. Tezca, Tezcatlipoca. Ooh, nicely done. And so it's a um, t- he's not a jaguar like the deity himself, but he does take the form of a jaguar sometimes, and it it is a black jaguar mm-hmm. with yellow bands. So we did talk about him though before because he also has ties with um. Are you thinking mm. of like Landers? I thought like it was like, Landers, it might have been Landers. Andres, yeah, because th- there was a couple that we mentioned when we talked about Landers. There was like three. Mm. Yeah, because they, they all have like that Aztec tie, which was really cool. Because I, like, I never really thought about it, that, that 
you know, those three really had those ties. I have a problem with Umbreon. What? It's the Moon in, Rabbit. In no, in its Dex entry, specifically for Pokemon X, it says that the light of the moon changed Eevee's genetic structure. Wait, what? But uh, but, but it, it evolves not friendship. friendship? No, it's not. No, no, it's not that. It's the words, the light of the moon. And it wait, it lurks in darkness for prey. The, but the moon doesn't have light. It's just it, reflecting sunlight. Which is why all vampires should be dead. Right. So like we, um, and we'll interview him on the show sometime. Uh, a friend of Don and mine that Chris met with us. Uh, we talked about that with Eugene, Chris, at the convention in Florida about... Oh, the whole Grimer thing, right? Like, how how was the moon giving off X-rays? Yeah, that's that's my so th- so. If that's what's causing the evolution, we should just get S- like Umbreon shouldn't exist because yeah. the sun is what gets us S- Beyond plus friendship. Yay! Last thing I want to do with Eb- Umbreon before I move on to the others. So with Umbreon shiny being blue, I wanted to see if that actually had any ties to ancient Egypt or any of the other culture. Isn't it to Bath? It doesn't really have any connections to them, but it does have a connection to Egypt's culture as a whole. So okay. Umbreon's color is blue, like when it's shiny. And yeah. if you look at Egyptian art, you'll find blue in various places, but blue is super hard to come by in ancient Egypt. In order to get the um, pigment blue, you have to go all the way to Afghanistan and mine the lapis that's found there and bring it back. So oh, blue was a cool. high-end color, high-end rare color. So there is a reason why Umbreon is blue, and it's rare. So fantastic. Very special. There is one one bit that I wanted to touch on Umbreon before we moved on, Lucas. Go, go, go. Because uh, you talked about the the shining in the darkness. Mm-hmm. That made me think of cat's eyes. Yeah. Uh, with, little... with their reflective lenses. Yes, they are able to reflect light back through their lenses to see better. I, yeah. have, I have one thing I want to add, too, though. Right? Like, I, I know we've talked about it a lot, but Moon Rabbit. All right, I'll, yeah. I'm just gonna keep saying. I'll, moon I'll add it to the chart. I mean, but look at it. Look at it. Yeah, the, the Pokemon based on the Moon Rabbit. We have a whole running list. Um, but like, look at those ears. Those ears look like a hair. It, it's so the Moon Rabbit keeps bringing up. If we keep stopping for everything that is Moon Rabbit, though, we'll be here forever. <laughs> it's not even your fault. You're 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 probably correct. But they won't get off that mythology. There's so many others. Pick a new one, please. But like it also uh, also evolving because the moon. So yeah, it's a whole thing. I have I have I just want to I have a fun fact about the reflective lenses in the eyes that I want to share. Go go go. Oh wait, I I did find out why Boss um, changed from sun to moon. Okay. When the Greeks took over Egypt, they changed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then that's the, and then the Romans did it to the Greeks. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So all right. All right, Chris, you're, you're so, one but, fact. But, yes, so the reflective eyes, or the reflective lenses and eyes that bounce the light back help cats see in darkness. Lots of animals have this too. Tap, tapetum lucidium? lucidum? That's it. Thank you. Yeah. That sounds better. Um, but uh, hu- humans do not have this. No. So when you take a photo and you get the, the red eye effect, that's essentially uh, the eye or the blood vessels in the back of the eye being reflected back because Wait. cameras essentially use mirrors and it's a reflection back. So my fun fact is, do you know how the anti-red eye, anti-red eye technology works? No. I know a lot of people think it's something fancy in the cameras that's happening. Basically what happens is, is when there's such a drastic change in light, like really fast, like a flash, that's what's causing the reflection that's hitting the back of the eye, getting the red to come out to make your your the red eye pop. And the flash is needed in dark situations when your eyes are very dilated. And that's why it happens so much. So anti-red eye technology is basically now when you see lots of cameras do like pre-flashes because it's pre-exposing your eyes to the bright light. So your eyes, um, what's the opposite of dilating? Constrict? Mm-hmm. Uh, so your, your pupils constrict, so there's less of that reflective space. Huh. The more you know. I feel like we keep adding on to the Umbreon pile every time. Umbreon's the best. It It's such a great competitive mon, too. And everything in VGC and Pokemon Go, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's a good mon. I hate the fact that I can't punch it and it just dies. You know no, how I like to fight. Any, Anything that it, has, like, tank. I, I want to hit it. We've learned to not punch animals this episode. We just talked about it. 
Fighting types don't count. <laughs> that's that's terrible. So we need to go to the next two because the next two is, we the next two we mentioned a little bit that not everyone likes them. And as far as I'm concerned, these might be the the laziest EV designs because everyone we've gone through so far has this rich lore behind it or this weird concept to go I don't on. know if they're lazy as much as like they were just trying to embrace this new mechanic. Which is only used by like them and Magnazone. Well, but, like, but, but hold on. Yeah. He, he, well, Proba Pass, but also like here's my point though. That also remember until Sylveon, like the evolutions are based on that special attack type. I mean, Leafeon isn't a special attacker though. Like Leafeon no, 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 is no, no, like no no, 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 no. They're typing. Mm, right. So all so so fire right. So the special attack types from uh, Gen 1 are fire, water, electric, grass, ice, psychic, and then dragon's mm -hmm. the last one. Dark is added later, but acts like a special type, and fey or, you know, um, fairies added later. With Leafeon, though, it is one of those Pokemon where I really like, I like its design, especially its shiny, but how a Leafeon is made is it literally goes near a moldy rock, it picks up some kind of chlorophyll, and it turns it into a walking plant. A uh, Leafeon, it, it doesn't like to fight. It likes to help and help things grow. And just all it does all day is sit in the sun to survive, you know, like a plant. And many grass types can do this ability. There are even several starters that literally just eat from photosynthesis, like Rowlet, who just sit there and take in sun. Pretty nice. Well, also, we talk about the new mechanic is basically evolving your pokemon next to a rock does that count as a mechanic i mean you have to go find the rock so it, it encourages exploration of larger areas so you're not just running to the gym or just running through one grass patch and training i guess like call, calling this a mechanic is pretty generous yeah i will say that leafeon does have that really cool tail that's sharp enough to cut down a tree in one swipe that's wild I like that. Can I just say though, Leafeon's Leafeon gets some cool attacks though. Yeah, it gets Leaf Blade, which I just like in general. But it also gets Solar Blade later on. I thought it got a bunch from it got like a bunch of cool crap, like Aerial yeah, Ace. Does, it doesn't. It, it, it doesn't does, have it, the it, widest it, move pool though. I don't know. Like it gets Knock Off, which was useful. Yeah, back in the day. Grassy Glide, Double Kick. Come on, X Scissor. Okay, X Scissor, I'll give I'll grant you X Scissor. Iron Tail? Eh, it misses. Body Slam? Eh. It paralyzes, but it doesn't do as much damage as I would like. I mean, like, I feel like it I feel like it had a pretty diverse move pool though. I just wish it had more oomph. You know, I don't again, with Eevees, you only get to play with certain things. Yeah, it's attacks that should be higher. I think that's cool though, that we do have a grass in Florida that does have the same a similar slicing ability. We call it sawgrass. So it's in the Everglades. You walk if you walk through Sawgrass the wrong way, it'll leave you with a thousands and thousands of cuts. It literally cuts. Oh in God! You. But how do you know the right way to walk through the grass? You have to um, ask it. Did you get cut? <laughs> yes. Then walk the different way. Is it so? I, I'm very curious about this grass. Is it like? Does every blade of this grass have the same sharp edge, or is everything different? It's it's like a thorn. It follows like a serrate. It's almost like a serration. Like it's a serration. It's a really tall grass too. It's really, really tall. Chris, each one grows in a different direction. Like if I walk through this sawgrass like forward and I'm like, ow, this hurts. Better go the other way. <laughs> You'll still get cut. Surprise. Damn it. Boiled again. <laughs> there, yeah. There's no right way to walk through sawgrass. Yeah, no. And on to the, uh, the next one that's a little bit on Wait, the weirder side. Like, but Leafeon love has no... <laughs> Leafeon has no myth tied to it. It's grass. Terrifying. Yeah. Teddy grass. Neither does Glaceon, for that matter. More fox-like. But yeah, it, it's, I mean... it's weird. So with Glaceon... Ice fox. Yeah, ice fox. But how it evolves, apparently it gets near an especially cold rock. And my thought is that... I mean, you're free to challenge it if you think it's different. That if it gets too cold to the, close to this really cold rock, and it has two choices... Adapt and turn to a Glaceon or die. One of the two. Take your pick. I'll give you that one. Yeah. Now, this Pokemon might be the most dangerous to be around of all the evolutions. And that includes the one that's on fire. Um, <laughs> this Pokemon can instantly freeze water in the air. So it turns that it, it turns that uh, that water into 
tiny needles of death that they fire to get things away from them. Uh, in order to do that, you'd have to drop the air temperature around you to somewhere between minus 25 or minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Like just around you to just freeze the water instantly. Probably colder if you wanted to get it even sharper. Um, it freezes its fur, so it's similar to that of a porcupine. Its body temp alone is minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This Pokemon gets overlooked in so many things, but it is horrifying to go near. I wouldn't want to go near it. But after Leafeon and Glaceon, we got the announcement of the first ever fairy type, Sylveon. Ugh, sweet. So I still stand by that that fairy should be like Fae. You said, like just they should be like the, they should be called the Fae. I feel like fairy well, like, is more approachable even, 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 and marketable. I I feel like fairy is marketable and more and just more recognizable. I understand that, but like I like people got so hung up on the idea of it being called fairy that they missed that a lot of it comes from the idea of fae creatures in general. Mm -hmm. Like even Sylveon, right? Like the name Syl, or the name Sylph, right? That's a mm -hmm. fae being. Yep, it's an old English word for fairy, yeah. Or Sylvan, right? Which are forests where, you know, fairies are found. Have you ever, when you read Sylveon's like Pokedex entry, it talks about all it likes to do is protect people, touch things with its feelers, I don't like the idea that it's like, oh, it's super brave for attacking a dragon. It's like, it, it's not affected by dragons. How is that brave? It's like, oh, water, you did such a good job putting out that fire. You were so brave. Sylveon just stands at a Draco meteor and doesn't care. That's like applauding me for eating the apple pie you put in front of me. You hero, you brave man. Chris, it was really brave of you to eat that apple pie. Yeah, I such know. A hero. It's a lot of apples. He could have had an allergy. That brave man. I also love how Sylveon, despite its cute nature, is super cunning and tricky. Like, so the feelers are apparently super soft. Really weird because they're made out of flesh, but super, super cool. Because they can not only be used to sense emotion, so if their trainer isn't feeling well, they can sense it with the ribbon and try and make them feel better. But also, they can be used to trick others into a false sense of security. So the feelers are touching, and then the moon blast comes and kills you. It's a great Pokemon to think of just, oh, this beautiful elaborate creature oh god it's got an evil side it's gonna kill me oh god that's the most cat-like thing i've ever heard like you <laughs> it like entices you in a fault like you see a cat would like laying with its belly up and it's like oh look at the fluff i want to pet you and then the claws this one also has ties to the moon rabbit some reason like there were some people who thought it does there's also a chinese goddess uh chang e it is known for having um the ribbons that flow around it so there's some myth tied to it of um, ancient deities. Well, but and, and, and if it has ties into Chang'e, like again, back to the moon rabbit, right? I'll add it to the chart. But like, hold the on, chart. Hear, hear me out though, right? Fairies also are talked about being active and in, in, under full moons, right? That's that time mm -hmm. of... Yes. So it's a fairy type. It's a rabbit. It likes the moon. It acts like the Chinese moon god of Chang'e, which has relations to... It's always the moon rabbit every single time it's like literally huh i found my great boy magikarp i go down a rabbit hole and it's still the moon rabbit like darn it <laughs> for some reason the why i don't know why in so many cultures the moon is tied specifically to a rabbit because that's that's where they come from that's where they come from lucas uh, again, uh wait hear me out hear me out, hear me out though hear me out though apparently in pokemon snap it sounds like a cat like it's meow. yeah so, i've heard it so wait wait what if it's not just a rabbit? What if it's a cabot? <laughs> oh, oh no! I mean, that's worse than any joke I told. You. <laughs> I I do say, <laughs> while Sylveon is a fun name, I like the Japanese name for Sylveon more. Nymphia. What's the Japanese name? Oh Nymphia. yeah, because nymph, nymph, yeah, yeah, yeah nymph, nymph. Yeah. And yeah. it's really it, fun when you show your kids that, and they go, oh, Nymphia, sugoi, Nymphia. Like, yeah, that's really sweet. Lucas, with all of your starter showdowns, you have me thinking of battle potential a lot. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what would you rate the battle potential of Sylveon when in its dex entry, it says when it senses conflict, it seeks out a dragon type to fight. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> it, will, it will unflinchingly charge That's at dragon. So cool. But what if it's not fighting a dragon Pokemon? Honestly, it needs to find one. It needs to find it. <laughs> so, yeah. So how practical of a fighter is it if you throw it out to fight something and then it goes to find a dragon? <laughs> you like send it out and it's like, no, I can't beat that. I'm going to go fight the dragon. 
I'm gonna go fight the dragon. I wanna fight a dragon. I don't wanna fight him. It's a fire type. It's gross. I don't like it. I don't wanna get wet, guys. I don't wanna. Ew, it spits water. I don't like it. Give me a dragon. Do it now. In all. In a more serious note, read the other deck entry and you'll see that Sylveon is able to negate aggression, which is a super cool ability for fighting. Yeah. Like, if you can. Yeah. The best. If. The best way to stop a fight is to avoid the fight entirely. That's why a lot of animals will posture and pose and scream and dance and make nests. Because if you're just busy beating the crap out of each other and you're trying to get the girl to survive, you may have won, but you broke your leg in the fight. I mean, so let's also yeah. say the like actual competitively, the Sylveon's been really good since it came out. Yeah. Hold on, though. Like, like right, right. Gen Gen six, good at singles. Gen 7 and 8, fantastic at VGC. This thing is phenomenal. Like, I love Hyper Voice Sylveon. I like giving it a choice specs and just watching it hurt things. Yeah, like, Sylveon's great. I I, I think that's... I, I'm not going to stop emphasizing that enough. Like, that's my second favorite. It really She's is so a cool cute. Pokemon. And all the Eeveelutions, like, as much crap as I give them, I think they're really cool. The only one I don't like is the base Eevee, but all the other Eevee Lucians are fantastic. Oh, I, think... I love the original Eevee, though. Remember the cancer comments that I've been bringing up since before this podcast? The final Eevee Lucian will be uh, a normal type, and it's going to get its DNA sorted out, and it's going to be the strongest Pokemon that ever existed. I no longer need to evolve, guys. I'm good. I am perfection. Literally just evolves into Arceus. Surprise! Bet you didn't see that coming. I have judged you and found your species wanting uses judgment wipes out the earth it would be an easy yeah let's go ahead and wrap up we already we got everything that said that said if you guys want to join us on patreon to hear us discuss what we think the next ev is going to be oh yes please do that we're going to brazil all right, guys, thanks so much for listening. I, I don't get to go on these episodes as much, but I'm on summer vacation. Really nice to have you back, Madison. Always a pleasure. Yeah, I mean, you know I miss you. Mm -hmm. All right, so Chris, love, you want to... You three are phenomenal. Like, I love all three of you. Oh. And then we're missing right. Don, but Don's also yeah, Don, great. <laughs> yeah, Don's great. I think he's off lobstering today. He had a yeah, lot he, of lobsters. The, 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 amount of pic, the, the amount of lobsters in that picture he sent us all yesterday was... Yeah, that really man... Insane. Out of all of us, he's the only one that'll survive the coming apocalypse. Like, when Arceus comes That's down and judges true. us... That's not true. You take that back. You take that back. He can literally, like, hunt us down for food if he wanted to. If I was a betting man, I'd bet on Don. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't say he wouldn't survive. I said he's not the only one. Yeah, he... Okay, while we were fighting for scraps, Don will have built a kingdom built on the lobster corpses he just hunted. I'm not going to fight for scraps. I'm going to convince other people to do it for me. Okay. Mm, Machiavellian. <laughs> I like it. All right, guys. So if you want to contribute to the show, obviously we have our patron. If you don't want to be a barbarian patron, just join us on Twitter or Facebook. The links are all down below. Buy a shirt if you want to just make a small investment. You guys listening has made this go on. We have had so many listeners this past year. We are almost, almost going to be breaking our um, record for how many people listened last year. And we still have like five months to go. That's fantastic. Guys, jump in, tell your friends, get on it. If you guys all, tell you what, you guys do it. We're going to just put out a bonus episode this year. If we can do it, I'm pretty sure no, no. we can. I got it. I, I have a cool physicist that we need to interview and talk about um, cells erupting around fire. Oh, yeah, you, you, Eugene, Eugene, our friend Eugene. Uh, all right, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Goodbye. See you guys next time. Love you all. Bye.